Today, I want to go ahead and introduce one of my favorite devices, the Aronet 4 Home Carbon Dioxide Monitor. Now, today's review is not really going to be about whether this device is good or not, because to be frank, it's the best carbon dioxide monitor out there currently, at least best carbon dioxide monitor targeted at consumers. In today's video, I actually want to look at whether you need this device or not. It's a very premium device and the price reflects that. And the cheapest I've ever seen it sell for is about $170. And the normal retail price is $250. So it's not exactly a cheap device. However, it has so many features and functions that cheaper devices, such as the Vitalite Mini, do not have. So in today's video, I want to dive into whether you actually need this monitor or whether you can get away with something much cheaper. Let's get into it. Recently, carbon dioxide monitors have been gaining a lot of attention. With findings showing how detrimental carbon dioxide is to our cognitive performance and drowsiness levels, it's no wonder that more people are interested in monitoring the carbon dioxide concentrations in their local environment. However, it's only been recently that carbon dioxide monitors have really begun to take off, as findings have shown that carbon dioxide concentrations can act as a proxy for the risk of catching COVID-19 or other airborne viruses. There's no way that we can actually monitor the COVID-19 particles in the air, and carbon dioxide is the next best alternative. Due to these findings, carbon dioxide monitors have gained a lot of popularity over the past couple of years. While schools and offices have been turning to wall-mounted and desk-based solutions, consumers have turned to portable carbon dioxide monitors. The most popular of these is the Aronet 4 Home. So let's begin where all good reviews start, with the unboxing experience. Unboxing the Aronet 4 is very straightforward, and the box is very simple with minimal information on it. When you open the box, you'll quickly find the Quick Start Guide. In this guide, you can find basic information about the device, as well as a SIM card ejection tool. This tool will be used soon to adjust the settings on the back of the device. Putting the guide aside, we find the device itself. Now, I have turned on this device before, and if you have a new device, it will have a splash screen, rather than a carbon dioxide value. Also in the box, you'll find two AA batteries, which is a nice inclusion to see. In other words, everything you need to get started is already included in the box. Before putting batteries in your device for the first time, you'll want to turn it around and potentially adjust some of the settings. This is where you'll need your SIM card ejection tool. On this little control panel, you can change between calibration modes, temperature units, and enable or disable Bluetooth. The fourth option, which enables wireless, doesn't work on the Aronet 4 Home and is only intended for the Aronet 4 Pro. In this case, keep it disabled. While you can use your Aronet 4 Home as a standalone device, I highly recommend getting the Aronet Home app for either your Android or iOS device because it unlocks so much extra functionality with the device. When you first open the app, you'll be met with this home screen here. And as you can see on my version, I have two Aronet 4s currently added, as well as an Aronet 2, which is a temperature and relative humidity sensor. Both of the Aronet 4s provide all of the information in a nice, easy to understand layout. And if you delve into the data, you can even see historical trends for carbon dioxide, relative humidity, temperature, and atmospheric pressure. Furthermore, at the top right, you can see the share button, which allows me to export the data as a spreadsheet, which can then be graphed in Excel. This is incredibly handy if you want to look at trends over time or identify potential problem areas with ventilation. At the top right of each device's card, you can see a cog icon, which allows you to access the settings menu for that individual device. Here, you can change basic information about the device, such as the display name, which is incredibly handy if you have multiple devices. You can also see some basic information about the device, such as the name and the serial number. More interesting is the settings menu located below. Here, you can change the carbon dioxide measurement interval from one minute to 10 minutes. Personally, I opt for one minute because I don't mind the shortened battery life and I prefer to get more constant updates on the CO2 concentrations. You can also enable or disable the buzzer. This is sometimes handy, but personally I find it annoying and I don't like to have the buzzer on, so I, I always choose to keep it off. You can also extend the Bluetooth range. This is handy if you don't mind the shortened battery life and would prefer to have better Bluetooth range. I actually think this option is great because by default, the Bluetooth range on the Aronet 4 is quite short and I often find my phone gets disconnected from the device. You can also enable or disable smart home integration, but I can't really talk much on this point because I've never used it myself. Finally, at the bottom, you can see the firmware, and it's so easy to update the Aronet 4. You can do it through the app, and it's just such an easy process. Finally, you can also calibrate the device. Generally, you shouldn't need to calibrate the device because it actually retains its accuracy fantastically, but if you do need to calibrate it, you can do it through the app. All you need to do is leave the device outside, 
stand close by and press the start calibration button. The final menu that we need to take a look at on the app is the overall app settings menu. This is where you'll find all the settings that are related to the app rather than the individual devices. You can find this menu at the top right of the home screen and by tapping on it, you'll be presented with a range of different settings. Here, you can change the language, the temperature unit, the pressure unit, the date format, and so on and so forth. Most interestingly, this is also where you will pair new devices. If you tap pair new device and you have a new Aronet 4 or Aronet 2 turned on within your phone's vicinity, you can easily connect it here. Trust me, I've done this process three times and it's a very painless process. So overall, the Aronet Home app is a fantastic app. It has all the capability you could want and it's also incredibly smooth. You can see even when I go to these graphs, after it's loaded the data initially, it's so fast and I can easily scroll through everything. I really appreciate how fast this app is and it's just so fluid. I never have any issues with it, it never crashes, and overall, it's one of the greatest strengths of the Aronet 4. One interesting point to keep in mind is that different Aronets have different versions, and this can actually impact their functionality. As you can see, top Aronet 4 here has an extra option. Just above the CO2 icon, there are two circular arrows. By pressing these arrows, I get an instant update on the CO2 concentration. Unfortunately, the second Aronet 4, which is actually a newer version, does not have this option. This is because the newer version is a revision 14, which for some reason ha only has firmware up to 1.2.1 at the moment. On the other hand, the older Aronet, which is a revision 9, has firmware up to 1.3.5, and it's this extra firmware, this more current firmware, that enables this instantaneous measurement option. While I'm not quite sure why this is the case, I've heard that revision 14 products will never support this functionality. So if you are buying an Aronet, it might be worth asking which revision you're getting, because this is a super handy feature and it's something that you'll absolutely want. The only issues I have with the Aronet Home app are very minor. One of them is that sometimes it takes a while to download data from your device to your phone. This is especially true if you haven't connected the two in a while. Furthermore, if you don't connect your device with your phone regularly, you can actually begin to lose data because it only has limited internal memory and it won't keep data forever. Secondly, the Bluetooth range on the Aronet 4 is quite low. While this isn't an issue with the app itself, I do find that even if I'm in a different room in my own house, sometimes I can't connect to my devices. For this reason, I highly recommend keeping the extended Bluetooth range option enabled. Now that we've had a look at the app, let's discuss calibrating your Aronet 4 home. I recommend leaving the pin on the back of the device up in manual calibration only because automatic calibration can lead to a lot of issues and an incorrect zero value. To calibrate your device, simply take it outside and place it somewhere with as near ambient air as possible. Now, begin the calibration process on your phone. You'll need to wait between 5 and 10 minutes for the device to calibrate. But once this process has completed, you'll have a new baseline value, which is set as 420 ppm. You should recalibrate your device whenever you think it's inaccurate, or otherwise every few months. Personally, I recalibrate it every 3 months. Now the Aronet 4 is a simple device, but there is some customization available in the form of stickers from the official Aronet store. These stickers can be anything from simple colors to designs, and there's even some fun playful designs, for example, if you plan to give your Aronet to your child to take to school. Applying these stickers is very easy, and with each pack you purchase, you'll get multiple copies of each sticker, meaning that even if you do scrub the installation process a few times, you'll still get there in the end. Trust me, I've been there before. The Aronet 4 is a small device, and you can easily place it in your pocket or backpack alongside your wallet and keys. However, something to note is that it is somewhat fragile. If you drop the device, it will break, and I've had this happen before. On top of this, the device is not waterproof because there have to be vents to allow the carbon dioxide to enter the device. If you are worried about the fragility of the device, it might be worth picking up a carrying couch, such as this one. I bought this from Miniso, but they're also available on Amazon, and I'll have a link in the description. They're great for if you want to travel and place your Aronet 4 and carry on, or anything like that. And that about concludes my review of the Aronet 4 Home. This is undoubtedly the best consumer grade carbon dioxide monitor, and has everything you could want, from incredible battery life of up to four years, to fantastic connectivity and the ability to graph historical trends on Excel via exporting data. However, the question you really have to ask yourself is am I willing to pay the full price of the Aronet 4 it's expensive, and not everybody will need these features. There are so many good, cheaper alternatives, and if any of these features seem unessential to you, then it's worth investigating those instead. However, if you want the best of everything, then the Aronet 4 Home 
is a great device and well worth checking out.